By the bullet, you are a legend. This is a game that is described as a game book and the label seems legit, it comes in a book. However, it's not. This is not a game book at all in the sense of like fighting fantasy, choose your own adventures, in the sense of a narrative that has different reading paths and possibly game mechanics. This is 100% a tactical skirmish game set in the Old West or maybe more accurately in the in the western genre with all the stereotypes of the genre and uh, well the reason why i wanted to try is because i like game books it just so happens also i like skirmish war games but so that was that was a good plan b although unexpected but uh, so did you know that did you know you're not disappointed why is this not a game book simply put because in order to play it you need to destroy it the first section is rules, sure, and so that's uh, well, it's a rule book, and game books with rules also have that. But after that, you have the scenarios, and to play them, you need to cut out, uh, you need to cut out uh, the maps and the scenario instructions. See, the scissors are there. I'm not lying to you. And so you cut them all out, and then you need to cut out the character sheets. Uh, and the uh, and cut out and make uh, the standees for the characters and counters for the various items and then you have player aids so that also you should cut out so if you if you do that what will you have at the end a rule book a bunch of maps and scenario instructions there are eight scenarios and then uh, character sheets, uh, maps, uh, and counters, just like so. So, it's a war game. It's a print and play or print on demand uh, skirmish game. You can play it solo, so you alone against the AI, and that's the way that I played it. You can play cop, so multiple players against the AI, or also um, competitive, so simply two teams against each other. Each mission will have a different situation, different map, and different things based on, again, uh, topical situations we associate with the Western genre. Um, but victory conditions are usually predicated on killing people and or accomplishing something and then leaving the map. Say, for example, the criminals want to grab bags of money and if they leave the map, uh, good for them. Now, if you're playing a solo such as I'm doing, you choose how many enemies you want to face. So, for example, I'm going to fight against Kathy and Todd. One of them is the leader. And then you shuffle these 12 counters with numbers written on the other side and you associate them. So, for example, Kathy is one and Todd is two. I just don't know which of those they are. At the beginning of the game, so it's just me, myself, little sheriff, trying to prevent those two criminals from going on the train, robbing the passengers, which would give them a bag of money, and then and then leaving the board. So, how does it work? Um, at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of the turn, the undisclosed markers move and they simply move one square closer to the target and right now the target is little old me. In other situations it may change, for example the target may become the bag of money that they want to collect or other things. And this one here. Now see I have a line of sight there through that window so now my sheriff that is me the sheriff i see that so when a playing character gains line of sight to an undisclosed counter we reveal it oh it's number one it is not a fake it's actually our kathy there so what are the odds and so now we replace that counter with the character and there's kathy hello i have line of sight to her that is interesting now when uh, all characters that are disclosed that are fully in the game have their own character sheet as you see as you see here and there are different ones oh i just lost my weapons where's the revolver and there are different ones for playing characters such as myself the lonely sheriff and for the non-playing characters this is an action 
action point game. And so the main difference between the, th the, the playing and non-playing characters is like, well, a lot more options for things you can carry and also an action table. And we will activate the characters once they are revealed and so their token is placed on the board in the activation order indicated here. So I got the sheriff, I got Kathy, and later I find the counter that has a two printed on the other side. I replace that with Todd and then Todd will activate in slot number 8 of the activation order. Also, the last undisclosed character that you find is the big bad boss. And again, there, will be big, there may be game effects such as the uh, killing the boss or capturing the boss is your mission. So when we activate an unplaying character, it is simplicity itself. Simply you roll a die. And you do what it says here, for example, with a one, if, if it was Kathy's turn to activate, it wouldn't have run away. Suppose I, she had rolled a two, then run closer to the target and shoot. So pretty, pretty simple. When you're activating a playing character, such as my, um, my sheriff, you still roll the die. There may be modifiers to apply. For example, if you were almost hit the previous turn, it was a close call, you get that uh, token there that reminds you you will get a minus one next time that you try to activate. In any case, modified or not, the number that you, res that you roll tells you how many actions you have. For example, I have two action points here. And once you know that, things are pretty are pretty simple. You will simply look at all the actions that are available and I'm looking that up for you on the rule book. When I play I have it open in front of me but of course there you go I forgot now. There you go. And so what do we have there? Possible actions and they're pretty much with respect from the situations they need to perform actions that make sense in the game. For one action point you can move orthogonally but climbing through a window will cost you two. Aiming, you spend an action point to get better chances when you shoot, which is an action point. Reload, because the number of bullets is limited. And when you're shooting, uh, you can mark with a tick how many bullets you have. Or I simply use these squares here. And that's how I mark how many bullets I've used. The if you roll the if you roll for attack when you roll you roll two dice if you roll a two or a three your weapon jams and then you need to uh, spend action points to remove it to pick up or switch an item for an action point drink whiskey if you are twenty one and is the U S um, uh, that gives you allows you to recover. Uh, one health point, throw dynamite, close combat, you're not going to use it until you're really mandated by the scenario because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Ambush, in my days we called it opportunity fire, meaning you get that token and you get a chance uh, at shooting at an opponent that has the uh, audacity of crossing your line of fire uh, during their turn, so you can attack them by shooting out of turn. Oh, and of course, you will want to know how you shoot. It's pretty simple, but there is a number of modifiers you have to take into account. But the idea is still the same. You will uh, determine the difficulty of the attack. That is your sweat value, that really just means your ability. So I start with three. I can never, unless the game effects, usually that's what I start. So I, I start by counting three. I check that I'm in range. Yeah, I'm using a revolver and definitely I'm in range. My little revolver has a range of four. Also, I'm adjacent to Kathy, so I'm in range. So my sweat value, which is three, I add the distance, which is one. I was able to see her just at that, at that time. And then you add points, and those are the basic things, basically. Then you add the points to make the shot more difficult if the shooter is right on horseback, if you're going through obstacles, if I'm shooting through a window, so right now from four I'd be at five. So deduct two if you spent a point to aim. So you see what the difficulty level is and without going through all the things, I think mine is five. You roll two dice and you hit if you 
exceed or match the difficulty. So right now, pew, I hit my frenemy, not really enemy in this, in this game, I hit Kathy, and so I place a wand there like so. Um, that's really, that really is the general idea. Spend your action points, move around. Uh, if you miss your target by exactly one, that is when you give them a clo close call counter that affects their future activation. But that's the idea pretty much. You alternate, you move the undisclosed uh, counters and then you activate the reveal characters in initiative order. You determine how many action points they have if they are playing characters and you spend them to move, attack and do other things. Or if they are non-playing characters, you roll on their table to determine uh, what they do. And you have them do so until either you or the other side, whether it's automatic or not, wins or loses the game. So I showed you the main game, there is also an expansion which adds seven new scenarios, new characters with their character sheets and also enlarged maps of the same scenarios that you have in this book here. But this is not going to change your opinion about the game because the game system is exactly the same. So by the bullet, I found it okay, just just okay, I wasn't in love with it, which is a pity because I like action point games and I definitely like uh, the flexibility that they can give you in a tactical situation. They can make for really fun uh, combos. The problem here is very simple, it can be summarized in not enough actions. I, I didn't have, because that's, uh, that depends on the roll of the die, and I just didn't feel that I have enough actions to pull off some real nice, fun uh, situations. If uh, the objective of the opponent was to kill the sheriff, then uh, it seemed to me that most of the time what I was doing was to hide behind a barrel or behind a corner. And I was basically playing hide and peek and occasionally hide and peek and shoot. So if I had enough actions, I would go out, shoot, and then move back. Um, I would have done more and risked more if there were more things going on and, again, if... Uh, if I could, if I could. Now, there were situations where, say, I had two enemies and one is like going one side of the building, one the other. I'm in a good position now, but if I just stay there, uh, turtling there, just defending there is not great. But I didn't have enough actions to do anything other than stay there and, and, and shoot them when they, when they come out. Uh, the fact that one of the penalties that you get is uh, fewer action points, possibly fewer action points the next uh, time you activate, even worse to me. Again, the worst possible, the worst possible penalties in a game are the ones that reduce your agency, how much stuff you can do, rather than things that should make it harder for me to to win, but uh, still allowing me to do a lot of stuff all the time, if possible, if I can. Um, other than that, uh, I guess if there was a way, maybe a more stable amount of action points that you can get. Maybe if you don't get them one turn, you get something next turn. But I just think there should be maybe a, either a stable or a more stable, less variance in what you can do. Because if you have two action points, you're really not going to do much. Uh, you can't do most of the stuff. Or you could, but I'm going to shoot and then move and I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I'm not going to do that. I just found myself, again, most of the turns not having enough, not having enough action points to do anything significant. I was able to basically shoot or move and then I was left with some action points because, again, they would have... I would have ended up in the middle of nowhere, no cover, no nothing. The general idea is, is promising. I think as is, if you give players more action points, this could be a legitimate, very simple, very basic introductory uh, beginner's war game, maybe even to play with the younger players once you give them the, the general uh, list of all that they can do. It's very intuitive, very simple. You do actions to do things that you expect should happen in this context, move and shoot. Uh, the modifiers and the shooting procedures, not particularly cumbersome once you become familiar with it. The scenarios, so there's, there is different terrain, but ultimately the, the script is very similar from time to time. 
and again there are only the terrain may look very different overall but if I'm hiding behind a rock in a gulch or if I'm hiding inside the building and the building is at a train station or in a small town uh, I, I found that there was definitely a, a sameness to the scenarios so again very simple very light but not enough of a bite ironically uh, to keep me very interested and this is my assessment of bite the bullet you are a legend not a game book at all